Welcome to the Cinch SPFL Scottish Football Roundup. With all the latest action from match day 29 in the Cinch Championship, League 1 and League 2. Coming up. Dunfermline give league leaders Dundee United a shock at East End on Friday evening. Aidan Nesbitt's stunning strike caps off an excellent comeback for Falkirk and Dumfries. And Ryan Blair scores two free kicks as Dumbarton prevail in an eight-goal thriller at Ainsley Park. Friday evening saw league leaders Dundee United travel to Fife to take on Dunfermline Athletic. But it was the home side who started quickest, with Matty Todd opening the scoring after just 11 minutes. The midfielder has been in excellent form for James McPake's side in recent weeks. And the hosts went close to a second soon after. Alex Jakubiak with some neat play, but the strike finding the side netting. The home side were well on top and would double their lead in the 37th minute. Kevin Holt's misplaced clearance allowing Kane Ritchie Hosler to pounce and make it 2-0. The talented winger grabbing his first goal of the campaign. Dundee United struggled to create chances in a one-sided first half. This effort from Craig Sibbald trickling beyond the post. The away side looked far brighter after the break. A guilt-edged chance falling the way of Louis Moult in the Dunfermline box, but the striker firing wide. And that missed chance would come back to haunt United on 53 minutes. Richie Hosler picking the ball up in his own half, driving forward, linking up with Jakubiak and making it three. The Pars looking to reignite their playoff hopes with a big home display. Dundee United came out fighting from here on in. Nice movement from Glenn Middleton here, but the shot missing the mark. But United would manage to pull a goal back in hopes of sparking a late turnaround. Middleton's cross in the 80th minute being turned in at the wrong end by Kyle Benedictus. A lifeline for the league leaders with 10 minutes to play. United kept on the front foot, hoping to salvage something late on, but Dunfermline's defence stood firm as the pars held on to the points. A massive victory for James McPake's side. Our both travelled to Lanarkshire, aiming to bounce back from last weekend's defeat at Tannadice. The Lichties starting quickly, with Ryan Dow putting them a goal up in the 16th minute. Charlie Riley's cute through ball, giving Dow the simplest of tasks. Airdrie though pressed hard for a quick fire response. The Diamonds working their way into the Arbroath box with Adam Frizzell kept out by the crossbar. But the Diamonds would find a leveller before the break. 39 minutes on the clock when Kanayo Megwa found Aaron Lyle who made it 1-1. The unknown Rangers youth bagging his first league goal and Airdrie would go on to overturn the deficit before the break. Liam McStravick making it 2-1 to the home side in first half stoppage time. An excellently timed run and a cool finish from the Northern Irishman. The home side would carry their forward momentum into the second half. Mason Hancock's 47th minute header making it 3-1 to Airdrie. The fullback notching his third league goal of the campaign. But there would be a strong response from our broth. Dow turning provider in the 54th minute to set up David Gold at the back post. Game on in Lanarkshire once again. From here though, Airdrie would push hard to re-establish their two goal lead. McStravick going mightily close to finding the net for the second time here. And the Diamonds hunt for a fourth goal would come to fruition on 69 minutes. 
Nikolai Todorov initially denied, with Charlie Telford there to pick up the pieces. A first league goal of the season for the talented midfielder. But Airdrie weren't quite done yet. Craig Watson's back post header making it 5-2 to the home side in the 77th minute. Five different scorers on the day for Rhys McCabe's side. Arbroath though would have one last chance late into the game. Ennis Murray seeing his shot crack off the outside of Robbie Hempry's post. The Diamonds coming out on top in a seven goal thriller at the Excelsior. Partick Thistle welcomed Morton to Fur Hill for their second home game in the space of five days. The away side with the first big chance as Cameron Blues stung the palms of David Mitchell. Former Morton man Brian Graham was keen to find the net against his previous employers. The striker going close here but well kept out by Ryan Mullen. But it wouldn't take too long for Graham to find his range. 28 minutes gone when the striker lasered this one into the bottom corner to open the scoring. The championship's top scorer with his 17th goal of a stellar league campaign. Morton would come out fighting after the break and had a huge chance to level things up after great work from Robbie Muirhead. His shot well saved with Aaron Muirhead there to block the second attempt. And from great defending at one end, Thistle would show their attacking chops once more in the 51st minute. Scott Robinson on hand to double the Jags lead from close range. The attacker notching just his second league goal of the season. Morton would have a huge opportunity to pull one back from Lewis Strapp's dangerous long throw. But again some excellent defending from the Jags kept the away side at bay. and the hosts went close to making it 3-0 from the resulting counter-attack. Aidan Fitzpatrick leading the charge, with Kerr McEnroy unable to turn home on the slide. Morton would eventually find their way to goal late on. Jack Byrne's initial header crashing the post, with a pinpoint cross finding the head of Muirhead, who pulled one back deep in added time. But it was too little, too late. Thistle hanging on for three huge points. Cali Thistle welcomed Air United to the Highlands on Saturday afternoon. The home side going close to taking an early lead when Max Anderson's efforts squirmed beyond Joshua Clark and almost nestled in the bottom corner. It would take just five minutes for the opening goal to arrive. Air United taking the early advantage when George Stanger tapped home from close range. The defender notching his first league goal of the campaign. The next big chance would come just shy of half-time, when referee Ian Sneddon awarded the home side a spot kick for an alleged foul on Billy Mackay. Mackay stepped up to the plate and levelled the scores with a coolly taken penalty kick. Parity on the scoreline heading into the break. But Air would retake control of proceedings just beyond the hour mark. Anton Dowd's laying one on for Fraser Bryden to make it 2-1 in the 61st minute. A fifth goal in all competitions this season for Ayr's hometown hero. Much of Cali's hopes of salvaging something from this match lay with Alex Samuel, the striker just unable to get on the end of this deep cross from Danny Devine. The away side pushed to add to their advantage late into the game, but had to settle for 2-1 when Jamie Murphy was denied by Mark Ridgers. A big away win for the honest men. Wraith knew that a win at Hamden would move them top of the table after Dundee United's defeat on Friday evening. Sam Stanton with a chance for Rovers, which was well turned over the crossbar by the Queen's Park defence. Stanton has been one of the division's standout performers all season long. He would again threaten the Queen's Park goal, but this shot drifting wide of the mark. 
The home side would begin to create more clear-cut chances after the break. This one falling to Sean Welsh, who was well kept out by Kevin Dabrowski. With 15 league goals so far this season, Rory Payton is always a threat for the Spiders. His deflected strike going close to making it 1-0. Both sides kept pushing hard for an opener late into the game. Queen stopper Callum Ferry with a vital save to keep out Wraithman Scott McGill here. And from a great save one minute, how about a spectacular one a minute later? An acrobatic effort from Rovers midfielder Stanton clawed away from danger by an outstanding stop from Ferry. As the game drew to a close, Wraith looked the more likely side to score, but couldn't find a clear path to goal. Nil-nil the final score in a tense affair at Hampden Park. Here's a look at the latest standings in the Cinch Championship table after a full card of weekend fixtures. Wraith Rovers move level on points with league leaders Dundee United after a nil-nil draw at Hampden Park. Airdrie are up to 4th place after their resounding home win over 10th place are both. And Dunfermline's big win over the league leaders has them just 4 points outside the playoff places. Ackies look to make it 3 wins on the bounce as they welcomed Sterling to Lanarkshire. The game's first big chance coming to midfielder Ben Williamson who curled narrowly wide. The home side were in full control early on and were given a big chance to take the lead when Akeem Rose was filled in the Sterling box on 15 minutes. Penalty Ackies. Rose confidently stepped up but saw his spot kick well held by Beano's keeper Blair Curry. Ackies though kept knocking at the door and made the breakthrough in the 20th minute. Regan Tumulty's strike palmed into the path of Kevin O'Hara, who made it 1-0. O'Hara has been a shining light for Aki's this season. This his 12th league goal of the campaign. Sterling had their moment in a competitive first half. This curling effort from Jack Leach, well headed away by Jackson Longridge. into the second half and Aki's would begin to turn the screw. The hosts doubling their advantage in the 52nd minute through a pinpoint header from Rose. The striker making up for his penalty miss with a cracking finish. It was largely one-way traffic in the second period. A huge chance coming to O'Hara but the striker's miss hit shot trickling well wide. But the third goal would eventually arrive for Hamilton. Jake Hasty stroking home his first for the club deep into stoppage time. Aki's building much needed forward momentum heading into the business end of the season. Aloha aim to bolster their playoff charge at Meadowbank on Saturday afternoon. The Wasps coming flying out the traps, with Luke Donnelly putting Alawa a goal up inside five minutes. Donnelly's cushion volley giving City keeper Ruri Adams no chance. But the home side looked bright in the early exchanges and would haul themselves back on level terms in the 17th minute. Unknown midfielder Malik Zaid with an excellent finish. Zaid has been a bright spark for City since joining on loan in January. And the home side would have a great opportunity to take the lead when the ball broke to Quinn Mitchell on the edge of the area, but the fullback just lost his cool at the vital moment. City's attacking endeavour though would reap rewards on 38 minutes. Talented midfielder Frankie Dean with a fabulous turn and finish to make it 2-1. Excellent skills on show from the former Burnley youth. 
Into the second period, and Alawa would begin to lay foundations for a turnaround. The Wasps awarded a spot kick in the 51st minute for a foul on Donnelly. Captain Scott Taggart stepped up and buried his penalty to level things up once more. The Wasps coming out with a point to prove after the break. But City would soon have a huge chance to restore their lead. Mamadou Sambu with great work up top, but the shot well stopped by PJ Morrison. The next goal felt like it could prove pivotal, and it would be the away side who would find it. A cross in the 70th minute finding Taggart, who picked out the bottom corner. The defender is on somewhat of a scoring hot streak. This his third goal in his last two games. And the Wasps would go on to further hammer home the advantage. 77 minutes on the clock, when Taylor Stevens' low strike made it 4-2 to the away side. Steven has been one of the SPFL's breakout stars this season. City continued to compete well, but the second half belonged to Aloha. Andy Graham's side rounding off the scoring in the 90th minute via an own goal from Callum Pitt. The Wasps making it seven wins from the last eight matches. So far it's headed. Johnson's there. Oh, and it's needs to do better. Meganson gets the cross in. It's the upper side of the crossbar. Megason giving too much space there. Burrow with the header. Header from Aware. Headed on again. Ball for Babbage. Turns in. Does brilliant. Still Babbage. Shoots! Off the post! Oh, they so wide! McGlynn! A good delivery. Patterson letting go. And Cove take the lead. Tids up. Left foot. Back post. It's headed back in. Muir heads it. Johnson with a great shot and it's a brilliant save. And Burrow does well to keep in. It's Megginson. On the counter here, Fivey. Shot saved. Tidza, posts it in. Babbage at the back post, heads it back across. It's cleared as far as McCluskey. McCluskey tries the shot. Oh. I think he had the keeper beat, but it's just wide. Playoff chasing Montrose welcomed a resurgent and an athletic side to Lynx Park on Saturday. The woodwork playing havoc for the hosts early on, with Blair Lyons and Kane Hester denied by the crossbar. Tommy Goss has been a standout for the Galabankis once again this season. The powerful striker creating a chance for himself here, but kept at bay by Cammy Gill. Experienced midfielder Paul Watson continues to be a key player for the team from Angus, though he was the latest player to be left frustrated by the woodwork as his effort cracked the outside of the post. It would take a moment of brilliance to break the deadlock at Lynx Park. Annan's Lewis Hunter with a cracking strike from the edge of the area on 38 minutes. Hunter with his first goal for the club since July 2022. Annan would push hard to double their lead after the break. Montrose keeper Gill having to be sharp to keep the Galabankis out here. In a tight second half, clear-cut chances were fairly limited. That was until the 90th minute, 
when Montrose levelled things up through a close range header from Ali Shrive. The point shared in a tight affair in Angus. That was just one from Sean Mackey to make sure Sam Long was on his toes. Just trying to keep you on your toes there, Alex, <laughs> I think he was. And Morrison, here they go, try it, shock attack, Kunart. I guess Gita. For Harry Stone. Stone. Bulakin, if this is in the match, he's had open gegeven. He had two from Kafergus and me on the path. He said, good passing to Lee Connolly. Look at this crew, like we're going to say, the Murray Gasson, but they're going to show. Get it, it's too many. Maki, which a bowls the collar, I find Sue, but Miller can go to the door. And he's had two from Colliver, Savalag, who's got put into a keyboard for the state. Kimmer, not to have a state. But if the force, the Hapuring got bowed for the still account. I guess I count it in the path, Lee Connolly, Fiach and Rutik in the crew, who is on Queens, and Bongo Fever, says the boxer. Oh, Jack Shaka to the force. I think I will have a lot of things. I think it's 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 a lot of things. Logan and Carragher, Stefan and Cleag, Stefan and Todd. The is for Asta! After Pearl by Josh Todd. Cool, can he get blocked to that? He's got that little bit of composure, that little bit of class. Oh, shot, come on, take a shot. Look at that. Morrison is there. Nuri got clear for the inner. Pturing at the dash going on. Jürgen and Prippen is still there. Carl Morrison. The glick at the screen at the check in your there. Spencer Gudic. Oh, I guess Harris in fat the fall out. I guess the end is there to fool. I said, just said that Henderson might be have the decisive say in this game. Not with a, a goal with his foot, I thought it was a header, but. Machu Valvo, McKeever. Savina, Chuda Morrison, the fall of a new show, Gora Marcuson, Game of the Marcuson, Jala Morrison, a Kerrigan, Shechtel, Kola, Plepenas. I guess a Kora Marker, Feather Shinichak, and Ish to the Shay, Kala Morrison, Mahak, Kame, a Gach and a wife, please, and Orson at all, and a wife, yes, the Kud Harry Stone, and if you are composure personified, a couple of steps to the left, and then he strokes it away into the, to his right. Gibson, I'm swinging to the corner, Lee, you got a shot. Oh, I'm off at the fall of Kuchuk. Doch, Karim Yedig, Nikolaj Zerk, Kjeru Tur line. And he's up the stig, and he's up at the tur, and he's up at the tur. Kjeru Tur, the boxer, Eden Nesbitt, Art Suez, is going to not shine. Man Rokic, and a tur, you put into Harry Stone. Fine, because you're going to have nothing, and you're going to have to get out. Here's how things stand in Cinch League 1 after the latest round of fixtures. Falkirk's comeback win in Dumfries takes the Bairns to within 5 points of clinching the League 1 title. Aloha leapfrogged Montrose into 3rd place thanks to their big win in the capital. And defeat for Edinburgh City means that the citizens will be playing their football in League 2 next season. Dumbarton aimed to bounce back from back-to-back -back defeats away to Spartans. The Suns with the perfect start in the capital, as Ryan Blair fired them a goal up inside five minutes. An excellently struck free kick from the talented midfielder. But from a brilliant strike at one end came a spectacular one at the other. Cammy Russell with a sublime free kick to level things up in the 28th minute. The Spartans attacker displaying supreme technique for this one. Sons would be handed a great opportunity to retake the lead when Ayrton Sonker's misplaced pass was picked up by James Hilton. But the strike was well beaten away by Blair Carswell. Dumbarton continued to pile on the pressure throughout the first half. The next goal coming from a corner kick on 32 minutes with Aaron Linus nodding home at the back post. the defender with his second league goal of the season. And the away side would build upon their lead before the break. A stunning volley from Gallagher Lennon making it 3-1 to the Suns in the 43rd minute. 
the unknown St Mirren youngster notching his first senior goal in style. But there was more goal mouth action to come in a goal lead in first half. Spartans pulling another goal back in the 45th minute as Bradley White stabbed home from close range. An excellent run from the midfielder and a cracking finish to boot. Into the second half and Spartans pushed hard to level the scores. Jamie Dishington going close but seeing his shot well saved by Jay Hogarth. And Dumbarton would go on to restore their two goal lead. Another free kick from Ryan Blair finding the net on 55 minutes. The first one went round the wall, this one over the top and giving Carswell no chance. Michael Ruth has been one of the signings of the season in Cinch League 2. The striker being gifted a huge opportunity in the 64th minute and making no mistake. This the striker's 8th league goal of the campaign. Dumbarton looked like scoring with every attack in the second half and would cap off an impressive away performance in the 89th minute. James Graham making it 6-2 to the Suns. A massive performance and a statement win as the promotion race continues to heat up. New Dundas Park was the venue for a key battle at the bottom of League 2. The home side with a lightning quick start as Smart Osadalor put Bonnie Rigg a goal up inside the first minute. The striker notching his fifth league goal of the campaign. Jordan Allen has been a live wire in attack since returning to Clyde on loan. He forced an outstanding save from Paddy Martin to keep the score at 1-0. There were chances for both sides in a competitive first half. The home side going close to making it 2-0 here, but Callum Connolly missing the mark. Clyde came out with a point to prove after the break and would find an equaliser in the 56th minute. A fantastic header from Allen bringing parity to the scoreline. The unknown Falkirk man has been excellent since rejoining the Bully Wee. There would be a huge chance for Bonnie Rigg to retake the lead from a corner kick. Angus Mailer's eventual shot well blocked on the line by Alex King. And just moments later, Clyde would have a chance at the other end. 70 minutes on the clock when King's long ball forward was spilled by Martin with Allen there to pounce. A massive goal for the Bully Wee in their fight to avoid a 10th place finish. Clyde were much the stronger team in the second period. Allen going close to completing his hat trick, but Martin doing enough to keep the striker at bay. 2 1 Clyde the final score. Now, Armour out on that right touch line into Johnson. Back out, Ben Armour. That's good. Flank hands got for offside, nothing doing. Just gonna work it back into the middle. Here's Finn Ekrapon. Takes a low drive. Dangana. And a great tackle by Dylan Forrest. Great tackle, which is penalised by the referee, who thinks that's a yellow cap. This referee is losing the plot. Dylan Forrest clearly got the ball there. He's sent off. He's sent off, look. And he's been sent off. And that's stupidity as well. Well done, James. Draper putting himself about in the box the there. It goes back out of Dingwall. He'll lift this back in. He does. Robertson can only head her onwards into the box. And that needs cleared. And that's oh, a goal. Geez, what a and goal. that is a disaster for Stranraer. What a goal. What a scrappy goal. 53 minutes. What a scrappy goal to lose that. Can't is. actually see who put that in, to be honest. Dingwall tries to get it to Golding. Golding looks offside. No flag. I'd like to see that again. And we're still away on the flag from the linesman. He looked offside. Oh, OK. 
Kyle Govan lost oh. out, and now we've got a problem, Brian. Oh, Ferry Jeffries is through. Govan goes back. That's a goal. Yeah. Mistake, Mr. Well, Ryan, be, in the middle. That's the game, game gone. Mark, you'd think. Absolutely. Parried down by Budenaukis, and Chris McQueen finishes the clearance. Here's Orr, and Orr is caught there. Caught by Draper, he keeps going though. And a good save. Oh, is it Matty Grant taking it over there through the gloom? It's a great corner. And yes, it's in. And now it got one back, Lawrence. And who scored it though? <laughs> Don't know. Absolutely no idea. Tam Tamor get answered to. 78th minute, Srinwar pull one back. The league leaders hope to continue their march to the title with a tough trip to Angus. But it was the home side with the game's first chance. Finlay Allen well closed out by the Steny defence. But it would be the table-topping Warriors who would strike first. 24 minutes gone when James Berry poked home the opening goal at the back post. Each of Berry's two previous goals this season had come in 1-0 wins for Stenhouse Muir. Russell McLean has impressed for Forfar since rejoining the club in January. The striker though, unable to really trouble the Steny goal with this long range effort. The away side started the second half quickly and could have made it 2-0 through Matty Aitken, but the striker couldn't keep his effort down. Both sides were limited to half chances and efforts from range for most of the second half. That was until Adam Hutchinson popped up with an equaliser for the Loons in the 85th minute. A first professional goal for the unknown Dundee United defender. Both sides pressed for a late winner, but had to settle for a point apiece in the end. 1-1 the final score at Station Park. McManus got the foot in, but here's a chance for Peter Head to break. They've got Duffy free on the far side, lays the ball in. There's a header, but that's well, well wide by. Uh, tries to play it through, and he has he's got Duffy on the outside. Back to Brown. Here's O'Keefe, cuts it back, and that's the goal. Peter Pollitt, have to say, I felt it has been coming. Ball worked down the left hand side. Here's, here's Richie, and that was an attempted trip by Broken Walls. And here's O'Keefe, and it's blocked, and it's blocked again, and it comes. What a save by Fleming! Drills it. Austin, oh, that was going close. Austin again. Miller! Oh! Newton striding forward, here's Austin. He's got Healy outside him. Healy with a chance to take on Strachan, gets the ball in. It's a goal! Yeah! Alan Chowton! <laughs> Breeze fresh life into East Fife. Brown's got the ball back again. Lays it inside to Strachan, he turns away from his man. And that's a great save by Fleming. Uh, Murdoch to Troughton into the box, Shivoni, but that's cleared by Stranraer. Easton returns it, Strachan get, oh, gets it down, Shivoni! Oh! Now to check in on how things stand in the Cinch League 2 table after the weekend's football. The gap at the top of the table remains 15 points after draws for both Stenhouse Muir and Peterhead. Dumbarton moved above Spartans into third place after their 6-2 thrashing at Ainsley Park. And there are now just three points between 10th place Clyde and the two teams above after the Bully Wee's big win at Bonnyrigg.